So this is Arcanium of Steamworks and Magica Obscura, or Magic Obscura. A bloody brilliant RPG made by Troika Games back in around ooh, the early 2000s, I believed. It takes elements I love from the classic Fallout games, mixed them in with a pretty decent but uh, semi-typical fantasy setting, and topped with a good seasoning of steampunk. It's an odd, very odd mix match, but it's bloody fantastically done. You don't always see those cool combinations these days, but I think it's worked out pretty damn well. It's easily one of my favorite RPGs of all time, but if you know anything about Troika games, you'll know that nearly anything made by them, while possibly amazing, usually needs a bit more added to it. Arcanium is no different. In this playthrough, we are using the unofficial patch by Terra Arcanium, which includes a lot of high quality improvements and overhauls just to tighten up the game. I'll be linking to the site of the patches in the description throughout the whole playthrough, and I strongly urge you to get it if you plan to play it yourself. It makes it a lot more friendly to play. I will say, however, installing these patches, even with several guides, can be a bit of a hassle. I will be including some of the video ones I've watched, just that helped me out, and hopefully they'll help you out too. But I'm not really an authority on installing it. I would do one myself, but honestly, the way I got Arcanium working was by complete fluke. I don't know how I did it. I haven't uninstalled <laughs> since I got it working, because I'm a bit scared to. Now, before we go into the super condensed version of the character build I'm going for this playthrough, I've included a painfully long character build breakdown of what I'm going for. You can find it in the description below, and if I've done it right, a little pop-up thing in the video. If you don't care about that sort of thing, don't worry, it's just for people who do. But uh, if you do, great, it's for you, I break down into a lot of it for the tech build I'm going for. Oh god, it took a while. Alright, so this is the super condensed version of the character build. There's a lot here, but I'm gonna blitz through it as detailed and as quick as I can, otherwise this video might also take another hour. So, we're playing as a human technologist, a human male technologist called Kent Harding. We're focusing on gunslinging as more of a secondary option, but diplomacy and persuasion as our first option. We're going to be able to talk our way out our problems, but if push comes to shove, we have allies and guns to make life a little easier for ourselves. So as we're going as a human male, our stats are fairly neutral. There's no pluses, but no negatives either, until we go into the backgrounds. Now, backgrounds are basically the traits you get in like Fallouts, and the Fallout games mostly, particularly the early two, and maybe New Vegas. But typically, the starting ones are usually quite low. In this one you get like a, a bonus to strength and repair, but you get a penalty to dexterity. That kind of thing. In this regard, we're going for one of the bigger changes, and that is Miracle Operation. Which gives us a massive bonus to intelligence, charisma, and perception. All these skills are needed for our build, but gives us a negative in strength, which is a bit of a problem, dexterity, and constitution. The last two we're not really too worried about, but the strength is a bit of an issue. I'll talk about more in a second. Now, on the next screen, we have all of our points. <laughs> this is something I never did like about this. We have five points to play with at the start. Those points go in everything. If you want to use... It's not separated. Not like... Law games have um, one set of points for stats and one set of points for skills. Nope, the point system, you get one point until level five each. Every fifth level, you get two points. But every first level, you get one point. It's a pain, and you really have to be very careful with your build overall. Thankfully, in, a gu in our case, it's a little bit more easier to manage, as we won't be participating in fights. Well, you are going to be taking part in fights, rather, but not in the same way with combat skills. Our focus will be in firearms. We'll be out of the way and fairly safe, so we don't have to worry about dodge or anything like that. So, strength. Now, one thing about strength is that weapons do need a strength requirement for. A lot of them are fairly low, but in some cases, the bigger and heavier, the much stronger weapons, they typically need a higher strength. Now, I think the most that we will need to worry about is roughly around 
Tau 12, which is a problem since we're level 5. It will be a while before I get even remotely near those guns, but we'll be putting our occasional point into this. We don't have to worry about it now, but now and again we're putting a point into it. Intelligence is a bit interesting in this one. Intelligence in most games usually determines like manner or skills and all that, and it does the exact same here. In this case, the maximum we're going to need is 19. We're already at a good way in. We just need 8 more points in this and we'll be there. We need a high intelligence to access schematics in this, all the way down to the top tier of doctorate. We need a minimum of 19, and that's it. I don't think intelligence really affects anything else. A few dialogue choices overall, and a few stats uh, skills here, like heal. Uh, I think it also affects, yep, repair, but nothing really much else. We don't have to worry about that. Constitution is about... <laughs> it's a bit weird on this one. When games... Constitution usually is considered health. In Arcanium's case, it is considered mana, or fatigue in this case. F it's basically fatigue and basic resistances. It's... We don't have to worry about this case because we're not going to be using anything that requires fatigue. And there are some things we can get to help boost that fatigue if need be, but generally we've got nothing to worry about. So having a low constitution is fine. As long as our willpower remains fairly consistent at 8, we shouldn't have an issue. Now, willpower governs health and fatigue. I don't know why. But it also um, adds some extra spell resistances too, as well as haggle. You need it to get some decent uh, points in haggle as well. But we won't be worrying so much about that. Dexterity governs pretty much every single combat skill and a few others here and there. It governs bow, dodge, melee, throwing, and it also uh, determines pickpockets and backstab. I don't think it determines anything here, but kind of weird if it did. It also determines pick locks, and yeah, it determines a lot of stats. It's like everything is needed on it, but we don't have to worry about it, since none of our combat skills are going to be in, well, combat. It's going to be in firearms, so we can avoid putting anything into it if we need to. Besides, we're not even at a point where we can put anything in dodge or anything like that. Our skill is just too low, and I don't really want to worry about it. Perception is interesting. I'm not sure how high my perception needs to be to max out firearms. I can also put points into disarm trap and spot trap, but I've never had a much of a use for that. There are items you can get to kind of mitigate that, particularly the flow spectrometer and the trap springer in mechanical. It's whatever. Beauty and Charisma are interesting. They both have interactions with the reaction modifier. Beauty being the most influential in the starting point and Charisma taking over. Beauty determines how handsome you are, basically. And it does affect a lot of dialogue options we can get. We will be putting a few points in Beauty overall. Because it does open up some interesting dialogue choices. But that's pretty much about it. There's a few interesting ways we can improve it as well. And Charisma determines the reaction modifier as we talk to people. So Beauty does the initial reaction, and Charisma does it as we continue to talk to them. That's pretty much the gist of that one. Uh, but also Charisma determines the maximum follower limit. So, at the moment it's 11. We put one extra point, it is free, and it goes up for every few levels. I think the next one is 15? 16. Okay, not too bad. That's workable. Okay then. So now we go into this boot. We don't have to worry about combat skills. We don't have to worry about thieving skills. Our main two things are in social skills and technological skills. So, with social skills, we have... A basic point into persuasion, which is needed for convincing people, basically. A very high persuasion is needed, and the mastery of it is actually a very important quest, so we will be doing a lot into persuasion. I might put a few things in haggle as well as raise my willpower if needed. Extra money off is usually helpful, but that's whatever. Gambling is pointless to me, and heal is also not needed because we have a companion who can do that much better than I ever will. And finally, in technological skills, firearms is key in this build. Our, a lot of our damage will be coming from firearms. 
Repair might also be something we'll get down the line, particularly more towards the mid end game, because some of the items we do have will need repairing in the field, and sometimes it's just easier to do it. Plus, I've never done the repair mastery as well, so it would be interesting to see. Obviously, we don't need to worry about magic in this case. And now, technology. We are going to be focusing on a couple of trees. We're going to be focusing on a bit of electrical, particularly up to charge ring, but we can always boost it if we need it through books. We need electrical because some of the best gear we can get is through the electricity tree, but not through the schematics we have here. It's through schematics we'll find in the game as we progress. We'll also probably put a lot into mechanical further down the line because of the extra stuff we'll get. Not so much the traps, but definitely the eye gear and the me mechanizer rack bed. It's a long way down, but it's whatever. Very important though for us in the late game. Smithy is also something we'll be using very early because we need access to a lot of the gear available pretty much now for technologists. Balanced Sword is amazing, Featherweight Axe is amazing. We need those for the long run. In fact, we're going to put two points in those to start off immediately. Notice our tech meter is now going more into tech. More down, the lower it goes, it would more technological. I explained this in the video itself, but uh, I should do anyway, I think I did, but if not, I will explain it in the comments below. Anyway, don't need therapeutics, and that's it in that regard. We have three points left. I'm, we put two points in to there. I'm going to put one point into beauty. And we'll at least just one point left. The reason why I put a point into beauty is because we need a sort of backup just in case. Losing a point in beauty is actually pretty not helpful in this case when it goes from 8 to 7. When it's 9 to 8 it's a bit more manageable. Now, you can lose a point of beauty if you scar yourself. And you'll see it happen later on. It's a pain in the ass. Next thing is, we're starting our firearms. We have a good starting point there with our high perception. And lastly, our persuasion mark, which will increase as we go on through. Now, the final screen is the shop. I have a few things in mind. First things first, I'm going to sell my shirt. I'm going to stand naked in front of the, uh, the lovely gentleman, who's uh, probably like, what the hell are you doing? Please put some clothes on. Okay, first things first, I need a shirt. We're going to be taking this gin. Yeah, we'll take this jacket. We'll put it on automatically and when we leave. We're going to take some bullets. I think it was about 15. 15 bullets. And as well as this flintlock pistol. We'll get better guns as we go on through. I'm also going to be taking this sword. I don't need it for myself, but our very first companion could use a bit of a hand. And of course, I would love to oblige. Anyway, I will see you in game.
Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. He will know what needs to be done. <coughs> Now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished. And then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. I can't believe it. I mean, you and... And then the zeppelin, and, and the fire! And the altar says that... Hmm? Do you have any idea what all of this means? Do you mean the fact that you just killed all these people? I swear, every time you launch this, they actually start as normal NPCs, and then they just take a load of fall damage or something, and then they just die. Or maybe uh, our good friend here has something to do with it. By the gods, man, I almost died here! Did you see the crash? You speak! I, I mean... Of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what jury's you on that one. Maybe I should be writing all of this down. He fumbles in the pockets of his robes. What the bloody hell are you talking about? Out of it, man. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... the oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that? The, the, uh, the, uh, what, 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 what do you call yourself? Please, sir, slow down and tell me what you're saying. Please, forgive me. I, I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, sir, and I'm new to the Panari religion. Uh, your religion, and I... Oh, 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 wait! I, uh, hereby dedicate... No, no, uh... Commit my life to the Living One. I, Virgil, am at your service, sir. You always notice that these kind of RPGs or things like Fallout or Skyrim or something, just, just any of those kind of big RPGs always have a title to the person, the Living One, the Nameless One, the Chosen One, uh, the Soul Survivor, that kind of thing, the Courier, that kind of, just that kind of thing. It gets kind of old after a while. What do you mean, living one? Quit speaking in riddles. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just not who you think I am. Yes, yes, of course you're not really him, just his reincarnation. I, I mean, that is the case, right? <laughs> I have to admit, I'm no expert in elven philosophy or, or prophecy. Bloody confusing, though. Mm. All those these thous... <laughs> Not, not that it's not interesting, um... <clears throat> Virgil. Yes, right, uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari, that's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. Uh. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... Yes? Right. Yes, uh, the name. Uh, wait. I remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Mm. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Do the scriptures speak of a dying gnome in a ring? Hmm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Oh, as I've said, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, 
but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Ah, uh, bloody hell, I should know more of this. So I'm meant to be some great religious figure. That's ludicrous. Look, I understand this whole thing sounds ridiculous, especially with you being human. But let me just accompany you down the mountain to Shrouded Hills. I can introduce you to my mentor, Elder Joaquin. He can explain this all better than I can. I'm rather new to this whole Panari thing myself. The Panari? What is that? The Panari are a religion based on the belief that you will return to destroy evil or, or something like that. No, wait. I think there's someone you're meant to fight. You know, that... that other fellow. The evil one. Oh, it's, it's all so elven, wrapped up in fancy language and metaphors and all that. Hmm. Look, you've been really, uh, helpful. But I must go. I told you I was new with this. Imagine the way I must feel. Here you are, the chosen one. Whoops, or different one. Living one, and, and I can't <laughs> even remember who you're supposed to be. Please, just follow me to Shrouded Hills and we'll talk to the Elder Joachim. He's very knowledgeable about the Panari, and will know much better what to do. <sighs> Alright, we'll go talk to this Joaquin fellow and straighten this out. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Agreed. And here we are, into the game itself. Arcanum is a... Uh... Interesting game, and we already start with our first major companion. Though it is someone we're not going to be keeping for the long run, unfortunately. It's a shame, really, because he's a pretty powerful companion, but he's also kind of not good for our build. Since our build focuses on tech, and since magic and tech doesn't really mix well together, I do have to kind of avoid companions who even have a sliver in magic because it's just it, it it's not a good combination I explained this all in the character gen video but just a quick rundown of it here magic and technology do not mix well you can't be both it just doesn't work I mean you could I think you could potentially strike a balance to the point where you get neither plus nor negatives in effects I think it'd be super difficult though, but it is possible. Anyway. With technology, since we're going quite high in technology, we're going to be taking a lot of points in smithy, mechanical, probably ele electrical and various other things here and there, as well as focusing on firearms and possibly repair. We're going to be fairly high in the tech side of things. Now this is a problem for characters like Virgil. Virgil comes with his own unique level up scheme, they all do. Well most do, there's a few companions out there which focus purely on... Uh, let's see if I can find his name in here. Nope, not in this bit. You can actually see all the companion names in this one and other ones. Ah, oh, where the bloody hell is it? I have seen it. I have definitely seen it in here. Joaquin? <laughs> uh, uh, well, we're going to see pure... There we are. Pure melee dodge. Which focuses, exactly as you expect, purely on melee and dodge. Unfortunately, Virgil is skilled in magic. He has his own unique level up scheme, hence Virgil. And he has a singular point in... Minor healing to start with. There is nothing I can do with this. And because of that, he makes a really bad choice for any tech companion I have. Not completely, though. He's not entirely useless in that regard. He do I can keep him for a good part of the game if I really wanted to work around it. However, it's never a good idea because. As he has a healing spell, he will actively try and use it to heal me and other companions. Which sounds great, right? But, if he, uses a, if he uses minor healing, for example, on me or anyone else who has high tech, which there'll be a couple in this, in this playthrough, he has a really high chance of failing, and he will burn through his fatigue like crazy. 
and burning flu fatigue can knock you down, basically. I'm not sure it also increases the critical fail chance, but whatever. So I do have to keep that in mind. So Virgil isn't really a good choice here. He's also interesting overall because he seems to also get picklock points. You could, using follow edits, you could build him into tech. But the problem is, when he uses minor healing on himself, it will continuously fail. So you have to keep him balanced, and at that point, there's no point having him. I'd rather have someone a bit more specialized, or someone I can edit better. Ah, oh, it's... It's Orca when it comes to Virgil, I will say. And it's a real damn shame, because he's probably one of the most interesting companions you will get in this playthrough. However, in... If or when I do a magic run of this, which would be quite interesting, I think, because I've only done magic a few times, and I haven't actually explored all of these. Surprisingly, I didn't actually go summoning, which I usually quite am excited to go into. But, uh, I'll have to try it next time. It'll be very interesting. But for now, tech. He'll do for now. But we'll get some companions who are quite strong in the tech ways later on. Same with magic. Ooh. Before we leave, though, I need to take Preston's uh, matchbook and his passport for Preston Radcliffe and a matchbook from the Rosenbur Inn. We also have our pistol and a jacket. Now, you notice I've also got a sword here as well. I'm going to give this straight away to Virgil. Because he starts with a staff, and it's not exactly good. Plus, it's also fairly slow. It makes two, po two points difference, but it's enough. Anyway, let's take a look around. Ooh, Karoot stem. Ooh, Ginkka roots. These are needed like... Ooh, can I get him? Yeah. I'm actually surprised I hit him. My um, firearm thing is quite low. Bloodstone. Nice. Metal plates. We do have Solomon Dune. We have some money, which I could use, and electrolyte solutions. Mm. What needs them? Oh, here we are. Chargers. Metal plates and all that. This technological wonder allows even more casual chemists. Even though it's casual chemist, the advantages of a mobile power source. I'm not sure. I know there are some guns and weapons that use uh, charges. But we'll see. Hey, I actually killed it before it got to me. Damn. More wine. I just I shot myself. I think I just I think I've actually ended myself as well. Oh no good. I was gonna say, damn it. Oh that's ouch. Yeah. That's like a critical fail. I really hate critical fails. Why did they add this into the game? No survivors yet. I'm almost out of bullets, too. No, nope, miss. Well, he died fairly quickly. What is this? It seems a strange flying device but much smaller than the blimp. I've never seen anything like it. Yes. It looks very much like the machine which attacked us. And isn't that an ogre among the wreckage? It Good seems eye. very unlikely that an ogre would have the intelligence to fly such a complex device. They didn't, really. They destroyed themselves in the attack. Do you see that strange amulet that he's wearing? And that symbol on its face? I don't recognize it. Do you? I can't say I do. Ah, uh, something isn't quite right about all of this. I don't remember the, uh, scriptures talking about flying ogres and the like. We'd better get to Shrouded Hills and find Elder Joachim as soon as possible. 
Let's do so. And be careful. These wolves are none too friendly. We go on to the Ogre Bandit. Unfortunately, we can't steal his armor. It actually looks like um, studded leather, which sounds like crazy money. But uh, we can take his amulet. No reason to, but we can. The amulet has a strange symbol on its face. That of an eye in a hexagram. Eh, I don't see any reason why not. We do need one in the future, but it's going to be a long time before we even get to that. Large spring. Metal, oh, not metal plates, thank you. Horace McGlinty and Mark Evilai, some of the pre-made characters here. Isaac Zap... Oof, try to say that name. Oh, yes, actually, you do want this. Not so much thermometer here, but the camera, definitely. The camera looks damaged from the crash. We need this for two quests. Mostly the second one, which we won't be able to turn in until much later, so I just keep it on my, uh... on another companion for ages. Because it is... It, it's a bit heavy, if I remember right. But, um... We'll need that for that. We can also trade in for the first quest, but there's another way around it. More filament. I'm looking for a particular thing. Here we are. Steel. We need steel, which looks like frickin' toilet paper, for something in this to make pure ore. Smelting techniques have improved so vastly in the last century that it's possible to create an ore so pure that use of any other would be a travesty and disgrace to the smithy discipline. Since the, such are the properties of pure ore, an amalgam, amalgam, amalgam? I guess you want to say amalgamation. An amalgam of iron and steel that allows both to increase strength and lightness, which is used to make the balanced sword, which is a damn good sword. Oh shit, I haven't got no bullets. It was all on you, Virgil. He's still chasing me. Miss. Good job, Virgil. You freaking loon. <laughs> Clarice Black. I know there's no one here. That's Preston. That's Mel Plates. I know there's another body that has a bit of money on it. Oh, here it is. Duren Lenore. Lenore? Uh, that doesn't roll with the tongue easy. Curry McLang. More steel, which is great. A bit of filament. We can leave now if you want to. Oops, shit. These things are called kites. They're, they're, they're pygmies, basically, and they scream for some reason. They scream really loud. They don't always have stuff on them, their later uh, enemy types usually do. Pretty weak items overall, but they can sell a bit overall for a nice bit of cash. Wilhelma's note to Gerard. My dearest Gerard, I am aboard the IFS Zephyr, speeding on my way to see you again. My breath catches when I think that in a two short weeks I shall be your wife. That is correct, my dear. I am accepting your proposal. I hope the thought of me warms your heart on the long days and nights guarding Vermilion Station from the half-ogre looters you mentioned. Love always, Wilhema. Oh, that's sad. It's a quest item as well, so we can deliver this to this guy. It was a big hint as well, telling us where he is. Which we'll need to do... for XP's. The things I do for XP's. Oh, another kite. Did you leave me alone? Could you stop critical missing? Actually, I'm gonna do is take off my gun for now. Because I can actually aid in the fights. I don't have any points in melee, but I can still kick. And that's a good enough thing for me. It will still let me get some experience on this. I should probably state the experience thing- oh crap. Experience is a bit weird in this. So 
So experience is not gain is oh, gain through obviously you have a few. Let me explain this better. You have a few major um, ways of gaining experience. Leveling is also very backwards in this. I'll explain it here, but I did go about it in a lot more detail in the in the character gem video. So. Experience is gained through obviously quests and killing, but there's also you gain exper more experience actually partaking in the fighting. Whenever you land a hit, you gain experience, which is an, it's a nice little throw on, honestly. When you add an extra, when you hit a target, you gain experience. When you kill a target, you gain experience. So typically, you do want to partake even a little bit in the fights. That's why I kind of pick some. Firearms early because I do want to actively have a role in the fights, but also try and get some easy experience. Because, in, if I'm lucky, I could potentially get at least an easy level here straight away, which will be a big boon later on. Another thing is that. Leveling doesn't mean shit in my book. The only thing that leveling does is give you access to obviously more skills and all that, but you really don't need much to progress. If you want the best, 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 best ending, persuasion is the only thing you'll probably need, and the rest you can just dump into schematics. That doesn't. Anything else is whatever. Or magic, even. But definitely schematics and a bit of intelligence. Everything else you don't need. You don't have to fight. You could just let companions do it. And honestly, it's recommended sometimes. It makes life a lot easier. But I don't I didn't want to do that this time. I actually wanted to be a bit more of a presence in the fights. So I'm going to firearms. Because I have really because of my um background, I have very high perception, so why not? So I will be getting a lot more XP. But it also I, but that's really where leveling kind of falls off for me, because at a certain point, I'm powerful enough to the point where leveling really doesn't do anything for me. I could probably, around level 20, probably 20 onwards, I say 26, if I've got the math right, I would probably be at my peak. I would have pretty decent stats overall, nearly maxed out intelligence and charisma, pretty decent perception, and I would have a good head start in any of the major uh, disciplines I wanted. Because I won't need a massive amount of them with some of the companions I have. It all works out in a weird way. But at that point, I've got nothing else to level in, so I might as well put something in fighting, and that's what I ended up doing. You can easily get into level 20 very quickly. You would just just by sitting in one of the particular areas in the game you can access whenever and just grinding it. It's bonkers. And so I just don't think leveling is overly worth it in most cases. This it also goes back to difficulty as well. We're playing on easy. We can play on moderate and hard, but it doesn't really do anything to the combat, at least not in my book. Combat is always going to be the same. It doesn't change anything. The only thing that does change is the experience you get. At least that's what, how I see it. The wiki probably says differently, but that's whatever. Okay, hello, purple man and purple child thing, kite. Trying to avoid the wolf if I can. Oh shit. Please get it quickly before he kills me. Oh my god. Right, he has a knife. A kite sword. It's a little sword, really, but he. It's kind of funny, a lot of the kites I see don't actually have the strength requirement to use these, so they have a negative. It's quite funny. Anyway, magic chest. Oh, come on, every time. At least give me something useful. I was hoping for a bit of easy loot this time around, but no dice. Ah! 
Oh, shit. Oh, the wolf's on me. Okay, Virgil's taking a few hits. So what I'm gonna do is deal with the wolf who decided to come here. Oh, he's stunned. He was stunned for like two seconds. That's time by one hour, so he recharges. More Karuda stems. Ooh, another King Karut. I'm gonna need all of these. There's still more to do here. Around this point. Actually, there is a quest we can do here, and it actually does give a pretty good boon that's worth getting. Oh, hello, Wolfie. I don't really want to fight if I can help at the moment. Oh. Near a level already, which is good. Alright, I think that's all the things I'm gonna find here. Obviously, we're the sole survivor of the crash. And thus, we need to head into this ominous passage. Which is full of rats! Okay, something just happened. As you can see, I have minus one in beauty. I actually put my extra points from the starting levels just to uh, mitigate this because I knew it would bloody happen. Any points of the any point of combat, particularly self-inflicted, any point of combat, particularly melee, you can. Uh, I think any sort of combat action. I think about it can critical fail, and you can scar yourself. You can scar yourself in other ways, but, um... Yeah. You can, in this case, I've scarred myself by being an idiot. And because of that, I lost one point in beauty. I think that's only the real damage that scars do. But, I'm not sure if they can accumulate or anything like that. I can't, I don't know. But anyway, it's still bad news. Salt Peter, we do need that, but not now. Arrows are kind of worthless. Uh, go over here. We find a broken flintlock and a small metal tube. This is actually what is needed to make the handcrafted flintlock. Broken flintlock pistol and the tube. Very nice. I'll get out to Virgil in a second. Some spikes, which honestly I don't need. I'll take the fatigue restorer, but I don't like using them. What is it that you want? Of now, me? Virgil. I don't know why he switched back to his bloody staff. I don't know. But here's something funny about him. I did mention earlier. Is that now he's balanced? Because he's put one point in pick locks. I can't even be mad about that. All right. Okay, that went well. Oh good, iron ore. Don't worry, we'll find a lot more of these scattered throughout the world and various places, but we can actually make pure ore now. And just look at it. Isn't that nice? It's quite heavy too. I'm actually gonna make the next one because it will take 10 points off my weight limit. 
which would be damn helpful at this point, because there's going to be more stuff in a second. Note the dead human bandit as well. Please, help me. Uh, no, friend, I'm going to loot this and then cut it off until next time. Damn it, she has some nice stuff here, shit. An old flintlock. Ah, it's about the same, shit. Some dynamite, some charcoal. You know, that lovely stuff. Oh no, a dead human bandit who's talking to us through the, through the, uh, through the dead. That's a shame. I better have a nap. I feel better. Right, look, I'll see you next time. Toodles!